Hi, I'm Rob Cousin. Welcome to my shop. I'm often asked, how do you sharpen dovetail saw? Where do you send it? And I usually tell people, I say, listen, do it yourself. It's easy. So let me show you. First of all, you got to remember, dovetail saws have rip teeth. And rip teeth will stay sharp a whole lot longer than a crosscut saw will. But if it does get dull, and I typically tell people, you can probably get anywhere from a year and a half to three years between sharpenings. And that's if you're cutting dovetails on a fairly regular basis. Uh, what, one of the things you're going to need is a is a, uh, a vise, and you can do this one. A couple pieces of plywood, a piece of hi uh, some hinges, and a little bit of hardwood. There's an article on how to do it in one of Tay Frid's books on joinery, but it's that simple. These cleats are there just so that when you set it in your vise, it holds it level, and you're going to slip the saw in so that the teeth are sticking just above the top of the saw maybe an eighth of an inch or so. You want them well supported. Now my dovetail teeth and most are uh, pitched at about zero degrees, meaning the uh, cutting face of the tooth is standing plumb. So what I do is I use either a four or a five inch double extra slim taper file. I get a piece of popsicle stick or a thin piece of wood with a hole drilled in it. Now I have a square here somewhere. What I'm going to do is set this on there. And I'm, I'm working on this side, sorry. So it's this side my that I'm going to be working against. The tooth on, on this side is actually what's doing the cutting. So I'm going to put that file in there. Move the square over to it so that it's standing plumb. So that's one side is standing plumb. And I'll stick this piece of wood in the end. Now, that will help me keep this. This stick is easy to keep it level. I can tell if I'm tipping one side or the other. And that will keep this side standing plumb. Now, if you need to, you can go in with a uh, felt tip marker. And you can paint the teeth. And it'll just help you see which one you did and which one you stopped at. But I've gotten past needing to do that. Find that first tooth. Now, I have my little wee starter teeth in the beginning. So I'm going to go to my first big cutting tooth. Hold the, saw, hold the file like so. Now, everyone tells you don't drag a file back. However, if you're pushing forward and then lifting up and coming back down here, it's just very difficult to set that in that gullet that you just came out of so I actually just drag it back so I'll find that first tooth push forward come back push forward again depending on how dull the tooth is then I ride over to the next one ride over to the next one now when you're sharpening the face of one you're also sharpening the top of the other sure that that's actually square with this and it is now I can just barely tell yeah that's the last one I did so I'll move to the next one so I'm pushing down I, I'm, I'm pushing down but I'm pushing a little bit to my right so that I'm putting some pressure on that face of the the tooth on this side at the same time I'm filing the top of the tooth on this side the two of them combined create your cutting edge. I'm keeping the file so that it is perpendicular to the blade. There's no fleam or angle in the face of these teeth. And that's fairly easy to judge looking down from the top. Same amount of pressure, same number of strokes in each tooth. And on an average dovetail saw, it's probably going to take anywhere from five to seven minutes to complete it. Something you only have to do once every couple of years. Now the next question I get is, well, what about set? The set refers to, in case you don't know, the fact that each tooth is alternately bent. One goes to one side, one goes to the opposite. That gives you enough of a kerf or a gap so that when you make your saw cut, it doesn't bind in the wood. 
the average dovetail saw has anywhere from two to three thousandths of an inch set per side, meaning each tooth is bent out from the saw plate two or three thousandths of an inch, which means your kerf is going to be somewhere between four and six thousandths of an inch wider than the, the actual saw plate. And typically you can sharpen three, maybe even four times before you have to gonna go in and reset it. And that involves buying a saw setting jig. And it's not difficult, but it's hard to see because you first have to go in and determine, okay, which way is this tooth actually bent? And what I do is go in with a felt tip marker and I use uh, some, um, uh, what are they called? Loops, so that you can see better. And I'll go in and I'll identify each tooth with a dot and obviously you would skip that one, go to the next one, skip that one, go to the next one, go right on down the line. Then you can go in and you can set each, every other tooth this side and then every other tooth from the other side. But considering the fact that it could be six years before you need to do that, you probably don't need to worry about it and I wouldn't be rushing out to buy a saw set anytime soon. And once you get this done, your saw will cut faster, cut nice and straight and give you a nice clean kerf. And more importantly, what you want is you want a surface left behind that will allow you to join another piece to it and get an excellent glue joint. Here's what I mean. I'll cut this piece off. Now we'll take these two pieces. They came off this way, but I'm going to turn it around and put it this way. And when you have two flat surfaces, you'll end up with a very good glue joint whether it's the side of the tail going up against the side of the pin, or as I'm just demonstrating here, two pieces side by side. But either way, that nice, smooth, flat surface is what gives you a great joint. That's how you sharpen your saw. Real easy, don't be afraid. You may want to go out and buy an inexpensive one to practice on, but it doesn't take very long to get good, and it's real easy to check your progress through the entire process. Anyway, if you're interested in more of this, you're welcome to visit my site, robsworkshop.com. You can go on there, and uh, just for the asking, you can have a free month trial. Go on there and see some of the stuff that we do. Thanks for showing up.